Hello world and welcome to the third attempt to record this video. Hopefully I've actually got it recording correctly this time because last time I'd um, forgotten to connect my earphones which have got the mic on them um, which seems to pick up my voice better than the one on my phone. Anyway, um, this is a little series about my progress and my process for writing a novel um, and an awful lot of things I do which you would probably be better off doing in a different way um, but this is the method that works for me. Um, I've written very little today. I spent an awful lot of time yesterday editing the first video in this series which might end up being something of a problem if it takes me several hours to do the video every day because that doesn't leave enough time for writing. So yesterday I was intending to write more words but I ended up not doing so I only had 400 and something words at the end of the day. Today I've written slightly more than that um, bringing me up to nearly a thousand but that's still half of what I should have. So after I've recorded this video, I am going to write more, make sure I've actually done a thousand words today before I get on to editing it. So there's a chance you might not actually see this video until tomorrow. Um, but on the other hand, um, it's a sensible use of my time. So, um, where have I got up to? Well, um, Yesterday I mentioned that I was writing for Camp NaNoWriMo. I'm trying to do a thousand words every day on this novel, which is provisionally titled Silent Scream. Um, there may be a better title for it, I'm not sure what it is yet. Um, since last week, I've come up with a little more of the same scene. This girl, Yuki, is sitting on the roof of a building in the city. Um, there's snow around, it's probably not snowing at the moment, and she's thinking back to watching the stars with somebody called Carl. This time I've decided, I've taken it off in a bit different direction. I don't want too much introspection. I don't want to go into too much detail about her past, because then that would attract all the critics screaming, show, don't tell. And all that stuff in the past really isn't relevant. I, I Hinting it is at this point. I can show it later if it actually matters to the plot, but right now it exists just to show her personality. So, she's missing Carl. Um, and she's watching the stars. Now, there's a bit here that I'm not actually um, happy with. There's a bit that I am happy with and a bit that I'm not. Um... I've got, I've got the line here. Yuki was determined to live a new life as the person she wanted to be. And that meant she couldn't just go with her instincts. When she's thinking about the urge to look up at the stars and remember time spent with Carl watching them. And I quite like that because it doesn't quite explain what the instincts are. It's a little subtle. It's foreshadowing for something that's going to come in a paragraph later. Then the next paragraph. She stirred up at the little patches of darkness between the clouds, and wondered if human eyes could make out even a single star. She knew she could see every detail if she wanted to, and it would be easy to do the impossible. Now that I don't like it, that's too heavy handed. But I've, I've left it in for now, but that may well be edited out. It probably will be. Then later I've got, um, if she told herself often enough that she was human, it might somehow become true. The voices echoing up faintly from the street below had already changed from being humans to people in her mind. And she was sure that if she kept on reminding herself, she'd be able to see them as other people. I quite like that line, but the context isn't quite right. It needs something stronger to support it, I think. But it, it's giving you what was hinted at with the instincts in the previous paragraph that she isn't human, making it 
quite clear, but she wants to be. She wants to hang out with people. Um, I mentioned some of that last time, but this is how where it actually appears in the text. Now there's a bit more rambling text that I think there's too much of it and it needs cutting down, needs being snappier, but still not actually enough text. I've only got a page and a half after two days of writing, so I do want to do more of this later. Then I'm bringing the screen back in. It was mentioned a page ago, so the reader won't have forgotten about it. But this time I'm going into more detail about it, and this is where I explain what the scream is. I'm not sure if I like these words or not yet, but this is what I've got. And then she heard a keening wail in the distance, something that the dealers in darkness would never even know was there. The scream was barely diminished by distance. It could be coming from the other side of the ocean and she'd still be able to make out every last nuance. Yuki pressed her hands over her ears and tried to drown it out with her own thoughts, but that was easier said than done. Once she'd tried singing to herself to draw her attention away from the invasive choir, but that only increased the temptation. As she heard the singing, she could make out three different voices, one to the north in a smaller town maybe a hundred miles away, the others to the southwest in villages on opposite sides of the mountains. They were calling to each other as well as to anyone else who could listen and she could feel the nuances of attraction in their cries. And I think that's giving a pretty strong impression of what the scream is. It's something special, it's something supernatural, it's something that conveys more information than just speech. Um, but this also fills in a few details about the town. I've mentioned that she can hear people in the street below, and she doesn't think a human would be able to. I think that works better than peering up at the stars. I mean, I, the thing about peering up at the stars gives her emotional state, but I shouldn't explicitly mention that she's using supernatural perception to be able to see the stars. I could fill that in with her listening to the people in the street below, carrying out some illegal business. This also tells us that she's in a... Um, city area, it's an urban landscape, there's people doing illegal business in the streets, so it's a rough area of whichever town it is. It's not somewhere that most people would want to, particularly want to live. Um, and there's probably going to be criminals in the story. It's giving the reader an impression of the location, the kind of environment the story takes place in, which is, I think, is a good thing for the first chapter of the prologue. It's showing us where we are and who the main character is, not telling us what she is. We don't need to know that yet, but it's I'm trying to get the um, reader invested in the main character, Yuki, as well as um, the nameless people around her the um the life of the city the ordinary people who she's going to be fighting for later on now i've gone into a bit more detail about the scream what she can hear today but um that's that's just um background i don't think there's anything worth reading out there i'll try to remember this time to put a link in the description so that you can check out the document if you want to um, but yeah, that's, um, another 500 words. And I think that's all I've done since yesterday. I haven't got so much to talk about. This video is about two thirds of what yesterday's was, but, um, that's a little recap on my progress writing. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Like, comment, share, and subscribe, or other words to that effect. I haven't got a catchphrase yet. This is the start of a new channel. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. That's weird, isn't it? Um, maybe I should cut that out.